Assalamualaikum and hi everyone Let's continue our lesson in lecture 5 of 9 For lecture 5 of 9, we will discuss subtopic 5.3 inverse functions At the end of this lecture, you should be able to Use algebraic approach or horizontal line test to determine whether a function is one-to-one. -one. Determine the inverse of linear, quadratic, third and absolute values function if it is exists. And then find the domain and range of an inverse function. And the last one, sketch the graph of the function and it inverse on the same axis. Let's go through on how to use algebraic approach or horizontal line test to determine whether a function is one-to-one. -one. Let's look for the definition. The inverse function exists if and only if a function is one-to-one -one function. If f is a function, it is from a to b. So the inverse function for f is a function from b to a. Thus, inputting y into the inverse function produce the output of x. There are two methods to determine whether the function is one-to-one -one function. First method is by using algebraic method. A function f with a domain is called one-to-one -one function if no two elements of x have the same image. That is, fx1 is not equal to fx2 for x1 not equal to x2. To prove that a function f is one-to-one, -one, we must show that fx1 is equal to fx2 implies that x1 equals to x2. Let's look for the example. Determine whether fx equals to 2x minus 1 when x is the element of the numbers is 1 to 1 function. Let x1 and x2 is domain of f. So we want to use the statement fx1 is equals to fx2. So first, we want to substitute x1 and x2 into function f. 2x1 minus 1 is equal to 2x2 minus 1. Simplify the equation. So 2x1 equals to 2x2. Therefore, x1 equals to x2. Since fx1 equals to fx2, for x1 equals to x2, therefore fx is 1 to 1 function. Second method to determine whether the function is 1 to 1 function or not is by using graphical method. The graph does not have the same y coordinate for two different x coordinate on the graph. Consequently, if a horizontal line intersects the y equals to fx at more than one point, then f is not a one-to-one -one function, since there are two different values of x, namely x1 and x2, such that fx1 equals to fx2. Let's look for the example. Determine whether fx equals to 2x minus 1 where x is the element of real numbers, is one-to-one -one function. First, sketch the graph for 2x minus 1. So for this graph, we draw horizontal line. So we can see that the horizontal line cut the graph at one point. Therefore, fx is one-to-one -one function. From the previous explanation, we know that only one-to-one -one function that have inverse. What about many-to-one function? We can have an inverse 
for this type of function by restricting the domain of the function so that it is one to one. So we only take one part of the domain, not all the values. Let's look the properties of inverse. First, the domain of f is equals to range of f inverse. And the range of f is equals to domain of f inverse. And if you find the inverse for f inverse, you get back the function f. When we find the composite f inverse with f, or f with f inverse, you will get the answer of x. When the composite function f composite g inverse, it is equals to g inverse composite with f inverse. Now, let's get through on how to find inverse function for linear, quadratic and set function. Inverse of a function. The function g is inverse of f if f composite g is equal to x. Or we can write it as f composite f inverse equals to x. And also if f inverse composite with fx, the answer is equals to x. Let's look for the example. Given that fx equals to 3 minus x, state the domain and range for fx and f inverse x. First, we find the composite of f composite f inverse, it must be equals to x. We substitute f inverse into function x. 3 minus f inverse x is equals to x. Now, simplify so that f inverse will be our subject matter so we can get that f inverse equals to 3 minus x the domain f is equals to range of f inverse that is negative infinity to infinity While the range of f is equal to domain f inverse, there is negative infinity to infinity. Such a function f is called self inverse because f inverse is equal to fx. Let's look at the example when two functions are inverses of each other. Given the function fx equals to 3x and gx equals to x over 3, find a f composite gx. f composite gx is equals to f function gx over 3. Substitute x over 3 into function f. So we will get 3 times x over 3. Simplify, you will get x. We can conclude that the function gx is inverse of fx. Let's recall that when f composite with f inverse, it will be equal to x. Uh, so that's why we conclude that for a, the function g is inverse of fx. Let's look for part b. Find g composite fx. G composite fx is equals to G, the function f is 3x. Substitute 3x into function G. So 3x over 3, simplify and you get x. So same as part A, we can conclude that the function f is inverse of Gx. Because the answer is x. Conclude your answer in part A and part B. The function f and g are inverses of each other because f composite g equals to x and g composite f also equals to x. For this part, we will find the domain and range of an inverse function 
and also sketch the graph of a function and it inverse on the same axis. Now we want to sketch the graph of the function and its inverse. The graph of fx and f inverse are reflection of each other in the line of y equals to x. Let's look the step to sketch the graph. First, we sketch the graph of function f. Second one, we draw line y equals to x to reflect the graph. The third one reflect the points x become y and vice versa. And the last one, sketch the graph of f inverse. Example 1, find the inverse for fx equals to 3 minus x. For A, we want to determine whether fx is 1 to 1 function. So we will use algebraic approach fx1 equals to fx2. Substitute x1 and x2 into the function. So 3 minus x1 is equals to 3 minus x2. Simplify the equation so you will get x1 equals to x2. Since fx1 is equals to fx2 for x1 equals to x2, so we can conclude that fx is 1 to 1 function. Now we want to find f inverse x. Use the composite concept. f composite f inverse is equals to x. Substitute f inverse into f. So 3 minus f inverse x equals to x. Simplify the equation. So f inverse x is equals to 3 minus x. And then we want to state the domain and range for fx and f inverse. So the domain of fx is equal to the range of f inverse that is negative infinity to infinity. And also the same with range f equals to domain f inverse. Okay, also negative infinity to infinity uh, because it is a linear function. So all values can be used.